Well, good morning, everybody, and a warm welcome from me, Catherine McGuinness, Policy, Policy Chair at the City of London Corporation. And I'm delighted to welcome you to the launch of our new report with RegTech Associates 2021, a critical moment for RegTech. Thank you to our speakers and panellists for giving up their valuable time to join us uh, uh, this morning. Uh, in a minute, I will be welcoming Dr. Sean Lewin from RegTech Associates to tell us about the report, and you'll be meeting our expert panel who will discuss some of the findings. But let me begin with a little bit of housekeeping. If you'd like to ask a question during the discussion, and I very much hope you will, please post those in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen of your screen. So questions in the Q&A tab, very logical. Uh, and for any technical issues, uh, please use the chat function and colleagues will try to assist you. And finally, please be aware that this session is being recorded. Before I hand over to Sean, I just want to say a few words about the exciting potential of RegTech and what we hope to achieve with today's report. Over the past year, we've all seen technology act as a vital lifeline, whether it's keeping us connected with colleagues, enabling us to, uh, to carry on with our work, keeping us connected with family and friends, and providing solutions to uh, some of the unforeseen challenges posed by uh, COVID. In the financial and related professional services sector, we have of course seen a huge growth in the use of tech solutions and, uh, uh, and emerging technology for, for, for a long time now. It's been a long standing trend. Emerging startups and uh, more traditional institutions alike have embraced the opportunities of technology for more efficient, effective and economical processes. And that has only been accelerated over this past period. The tech sector is a key growth area both within London and across the UK. And last year in the city alone, uh, we saw almost one in 10 startups, and startups continued uh, vigorously despite the pandemic. Uh, one in 10 startups were in tech. We provide an environment that enables innovation to grow and thrive with our access to world class talent and UK wide expertise, our supportive regulatory framework, and of course the availability of capital. At the City of London Corporation, we were very pleased to support the Khalifa Review, which was published earlier this year, and which provides a vision for the future of UK fintech. It sets out important recommendations for how we can make the most of the opportunities that it presents. And RegTech is one such opportunity. Already providing around 68,000 jobs, it has huge potential to bring increased efficiency, more effective processes, and lower costs for business. But that potential is, as yet, unfulfilled. And this report was commissioned at an important moment in the sector's development. We found that uh, reg, tech, reg tech adoption is on the rise in some critical areas, like financial crime compliance and regulatory reporting, but that it's not yet being widely implemented and that there are some barriers to adoption remaining. And as you'll hear, We've identified a number of recommendations for overcoming those barriers, supporting the sector to grow and thrive, and adding value to financial services, other regulated industries, and the broader UK economy. The recommendations you'll be hearing about and reading in the report have been arrived at following extensive engagement with stakeholders from around the world. So I'd just like to finish by thanking everyone who's got involved either through our survey, roundtables or interviews, because your contributions have been invaluable in building a comprehensive view of the RegTech market. And we look forward to working with you as we seek to take the recommendations forward. So let me now hand over to Sean, Dr. Sean Lewin from RegTech Associates, to tell us more about the report. Sean. Sure. Morning, and thank you so much for those remarks and that introduction, Catherine. And um, thank you so much for inviting me to present the findings and recommendations from this really important piece of research. It was very exciting for RegTech Associates to be involved with this. And even though it's me presenting the research today, um, it wouldn't have been such a success without the contribution from many people. So I'd like to echo Catherine's thanks to all of those who participated in the research itself, vendors, regulators, regulated firms, 
also Wendy Pham and Sarah Murray and the team at the City of London Corporation who are fantastic partners to work with um, and most importantly my co-authors Rob Stubbs and Nathan Parker and the rest of the research team and our CEO Jason Bowd at RegTech Associates. So for those who have already been hot off the mark and had a chance to read the report, you'll know that it's a fairly hefty document and summarising 76 pages into 10 minutes is no mean feat, but I will absolutely try and do my best this morning. If we could have the next slide, please, Pat. I'll begin by setting some context about the UK reg tech industry first. So our research at RegTech Associates shows that there are approximately 230 plus RegTechs headquartered in the UK with another 330 odd overseas firms operating in the UK market. Now these offer products across 11 categories of RegTech obligations which we've broken down as per the chart in the top right hand corner and financial crime compliance as you can see takes up the majority of that but there are some also other some very interesting areas such as the rise of ESG providers in that space. We estimate that the UK reg tech industry employs about 68,000 employees which makes up about 2.3% of the total UK tech sector workforce. And we also see that the UK reg tech industry is one that's maturing. Back in 2016, the vast majority of reg techs were less than five years old in the startup category. But in last year, this proportion had fallen significantly, indicative that this is an industry which is both maturing and scaling. So against this backdrop, as part of the research, we conducted a voice of the vendor survey, which gave us over 125 brilliantly qualifying responses. And this resulted in five key findings, which I want to share with you today. The first is that reg tech adoption is definitely on the rise in some critical areas, but is not yet being implemented widely, as Catherine said. Secondly, there was a really a fairly high degree of optimism in the reg tech sector about the commercial performance over the past year in 2020. The forecasts for this year are equally optimistic, though it's really important to note that this is not in all sectors of the market. Thirdly, there was widespread evidence that significant barriers to adopters still exist. And this is exacerbated by some assumptions and misconceptions between different sets of actors in the market about what their respective roles are and also fundamentally about the nature of RegTech itself. Fourthly, and it's very important to make this point, as we're emerging and hopefully out of the, the coronavirus pandemic, RegTech has really helped and supported firms and supervisors to navigate the pandemic, driving demand in the short term. But our survey showed us that the longer term impacts are far less certain and difficult to determine. Finally, to stimulate demand further, all our RegTech vendors were unanimous in agreeing that the single biggest driver would be if supervisors and financial regulators were to encourage adoption of RegTech through their more routine supervisory interactions with regulated firms. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. As with all data research analysis, there are a huge amount more findings that I could share with you today and a lot more nuances. And it's really important to recognize that not all categories within the RegTech market responded in the same way or had the same view. So I would encourage you to dig in to the report to find out some of those nuances. It's also important to note that we triangulated these findings with insights from several regulators in the UK and overseas, and also with a number of financial institutions. So do read the report and you'll get the full story. So putting all of this together gives us a picture of an industry which is really strong in terms of the supply side with over 600 reg tech products being offered in the UK market but with levels of adoption being both patchy and indicative of a market which is somewhat out of equilibrium. There are some really significant challenges to be overcome for the reg tech industry to fulfil its potential. And we view these challenges as a holistic web of self-reinforcing barriers. Independently, each one itself is difficult to surmount, but in concert, they interact, strengthen each other, presenting a much more formidable wall of challenges that need to be tackled. 
And that's what we're representing here, the 10 key challenges that we believe are facing the UK reg tech market currently. I want to draw your attention to three that we consider to be the most pressing to resolve. And the first is awareness. Put simply, reg tech is a sector with an awareness problem. From fundamentals like the definition of RegTech itself, through to how RegTech can and does support firms to achieve better compliance, there's a real lack of information and awareness across the market. And this then leads to a trust gap between regulated institutions and the vendors. And to tackle that gap in trust and awareness, all three groups of actors, regulators, financial institutions and vendors need to do a better job of articulating their role in the ecosystem. Regulators need to be really clear about what they can do to support RegTech within the boundaries of their mandates. RegTechs need to therefore understand that regulators can't simply act as, act as dating agencies connecting them with financial institutions. But RegTechs are also their own best advocate in terms of explaining the concrete and real benefits they're delivering for their customers. But they also need to work somewhat harder to make sure that they really understand the problems that are fixing that need fixing. And financial institutions need to need to better understand those benefits and find ways of articulating them as a must have rather than a could have to their senior management and boards. Secondly, we think the stance of the regulator is really important. And in the UK, we're blessed with two very forward thinking financial regulators in the PRA and the FCA. And we absolutely acknowledge the pioneering work they've been doing to explore and promote the promise of RegTech, whilst ensuring that they operate within the confines of their statutory objectives. We consider that this stance could be pushed a little further while still maintaining an agnostic approach to vendors, perhaps by giving greater clarity about the types of standards they accept around technology, expect around technology used for compliance, and this would be a great help for the industry. And the third key challenge is that of scale and scalability. We've seen that RegTech is an industry which is actively scaling, but there are still many small businesses with fewer than 50 employees in the UK red tech market. We estimate they comprise about two thirds of this industry altogether. And these smaller firms often lose out to larger, well-established players, not because they don't have good solutions, but because of the perception of risk and a lack of a perceived track record. As the saying goes, no one has ever been fired for selecting Oracle or IBM solutions. Vendors need to be able to scale to adapt to their customers' growth plans and adapt their niche solutions for more complex requirements. And finally, there's a real lack of funding for those firms which are scaling up, not starting up, but scaling up. And generally, this is a gap that needs to be addressed. So how can these very real and closely connected challenges be resolved? We put forward a set of 12 recommendations, some of which have applied generally across the board, and some which are targeted to the three different sets of actors, regulators, regulated firms, and reg tech vendors. And we acknowledge that some of these recommendations are also about work that's already in flight, such as the future skills framework by the Future Services Skills Commission, and the work being done by the FCA and the Bank of England on moving towards a digitally enabled regulatory framework. But there are three recommendations which we believe are the highest priority and should be addressed as a matter of urgency. Next slide, please, Pat. So these three key recommendations. The first is building awareness in RegTech's ability to scale through an independent accreditation and testing regime. We envisage this as being practical and technology driven and accreditation against an agreed set of standards such as interoperability, cross-border data security, processing volumes. This would act as a testing and proving, platforms, proving, proving platform for RegTech and would hopefully help to build trust within the, within the industry. Secondly, we would love to see regulators adopting what we're calling a tech embracing stance to really advocate for improved standards for the technology that's driving regulatory compliance in firms. And it's particularly important for this to be adopted across all the teams within the regulatory bodies, especially the supervisory and policy teams and those who are on the front line dealing with regulated institutions on a day to day basis. 
And finally, we really believe there's a need to establish the coherent and collective voice for the UK reg tech industry to improve its own representation and visibility. I said earlier that reg tech vendors are their own best advocates, which is what drives this recommendation. Promoting awareness of reg tech, articulating the concrete benefits of adopting this technology and coalescing around a shared vision for the industry are really key to breaking down some of these barriers to adoption. That's been somewhat of a whistle stop tour through the report, but I'm really looking forward to the response to these recommendations and absolutely hope that this is the beginning of a dialogue about how we can ensure the future of the UK reg tech industry and how it can support the UK economy more broadly. So I'm going to thank you all for listening and I'm really excited to hear the panel discussion. So without further ado, I'll now hand back to Catherine. Thanks ever so much for listening.